We're here to warn you, beware the underdog. They are strong and getting stronger. The internet has made them faster, smarter, and more powerful. And before it's over, they will likely have our jobs. I'm Ross Kimborowski. This is Mike Sampson. We co-founded CrowdSpring, the creative marketplace. We're very fortunate to have our entire team with us in the audience today. Pete, Angeline, Jerome, Chad, Chris, and Sean. They are the brains behind our operation. History is rich with examples of how technology has changed the world. The printing press gave us the reformation. The steam engine enabled the revolution, the industrial revolution. And the internet has empowered millions of people around the world. An underground, underdog community of creatives around the world is shaping the internet today. They are the future. They are writers and inventors, photographers and designers, musicians and marketers. They are a generation that creates, shares, collaborates, mashes up, and connects. And they are challenging tradition in industry after industry. Music, video, photography, software, design. Traditionally, creatives have worked as freelancers, contractors, and consultants. Most are highly trained and well-educated. But the internet has changed entire industries in, in ways that we could not have imagined only five years ago. The old paradigm, guns for hire, has been turned upside down, and the old rules no longer apply. The internet has effectively blurred the boundaries between what is professional and what is non-professional. And it has empowered the underdogs, and they are ready. It's nothing short of David versus who else, Goliath. It's bloggers versus the New York Times. If you remember, the traditional media responded very slowly to bloggers. Hundreds of bloggers 10 years ago became th thousands. Thousands became tens of thousands. Tens of thousands turned into hundreds of thousands and then millions. Today, one quarter billion blogs in the world delivering news, opinion, and commentary from every country on Earth. The traditional media is certainly getting it now. The New York Times quotes a source, it's as likely to be the Daily Cause or the Drudge Report as it is to be a traditional media outlet. Newspapers and television are consistently behind the curve today. By the time something makes it into the news, many blogs have written about it, and thousands of people have tweeted about it on Twitter. It's open source versus Microsoft. Programmers around the world collaborated to create a great new browser, Firefox. And the success of Firefox and many other open source projects, such as Apache, MySQL, and Linux, has proven that creatives around the world are a force to be reckoned with. The old school incumbents have taken notice because these underdogs have the power to shake entire industries to their core. When people wanted to share music, a $12 billion industry was shaking to its foundations. Now, Napster was shut down, but it's been replaced by Kazaa and BitTorrent, and the music industry is still trying to figure out today how to uh, create a mo model for making revenues online. So, the digital age has changed the rules. Creativity will never be captive to the old models. Industries and professionals that don't get this will fail and industries and professionals that accept this will make the necessary adjustments and will evolve necessarily. And the underdogs are leading the charge. They're flexing their muscle and they're demanding this new world be shaped to meet their needs, their strengths, and their paradigm. They're the ones who demand that a level playing field be created and they're the ones who demand democratization of information. They insist on a virtual place, a place where they can compete, learn, practice, communicate, and build community. They build a world where training and education become secondary to talent and skill. An online nation where resume and portfolio don't really matter. And an online community that's populated by like-minded individuals from around the world. The underdogs are powerful in large part because there's so darn many of them. And people and companies that leverage this insight do succeed. 
So Threadless empowered the t-shirt designers versus the fashion industry, and the world has just flocked in to watch the fun. iStock Photo empowered the digital photo hobbyist versus Getty Images, and now the model for that entire industry has changed iTunes empowered the garage bands of the world versus the record labels, and the big boys joined in because really they had no choice. So right now, somewhere in their mom's basement or in an old garage, there are two young kids, and they're plotting to destroy your industry. <laughs> They'll figure out how to disrupt your world, they will invent the new technology or craft the new business model that will shake our assumptions about how that industry works. They'll take on the comfortable essence of the film industry or the music industry or the design industry and they'll rattle those foundations and crumble those barriers. The, <laughs> the, the, the incumbents, including those in the creative industry, by the way, will offer many reasons why the underdogs will fail. They will argue that the traditional way is the only way. They will argue that only established professionals can deliver great services for clients. They will tell you that the underdogs could never compete. They are wrong. Bloggers and open source programmers have heard those arguments for years, and they hear them no more. And that's because technology is blurred the difference between the labels amateur and professional. When only results matter, the labels are irrelevant. Try to tell the difference between a commercial for Doritos shot by a slick New York production house and a pair of 20-year-old film students. Try to tell the difference between the photo of a Statue of Liberty taken by a famous magazine photographer and one taken by a tourist from Missouri. The emergence of the inexpensive digital camera has changed the rules for millions of hobby photographers. The internet has empowered them. Today, actually about a year ago, over 50,000 photographers contributed over 3 million images to iStock Photo. And the professionals followed. Even though initially when iStock Photo came online, the professionals rebelled and objected, they are today selling photography on iStock Photo. Similarly, the high-definition camcorder has enabled independent filmmakers to compete with studios. If anyone tells you that amateurs can compete with professionals, remind them that the Blair Witch Project made $250 million around the world. And the amateurs who made it spent $35,000 of their family's money. The incumbents will tell you that these upstarts have no guarantee that they will be paid for their hard work. Is there ever really a guarantee? This is about a personal tolerance for risk. The underdogs are risk takers. They are true entrepreneurs. And they don't allow risk to compromise their work. In fact, it makes them work harder. They learn to write better. They learn to take better photos. They learn to write better code. They learn how to design better. They compete they scratch, they claw. They rise to the t challenge time after time, industry after industry. They embrace the risk. In the traditional model, the risk is borne by the institution. So since the beginning, the Ford Motor Company has built cars before they have a single customer to buy them. And since the beginning, 20th Century Fox has invested millions before the film is edited, scored, or marketed all before selling a single ticket. So what happens is that the new models turn creatives into these true entrepreneurs, these risk takers. So they create this work before it's bought and paid for. And entrepreneurs develop great software that challenges conventional thinking before a single customer agrees to pay to use that software. They do this with eyes wide open and their hearts exposed because they're creating not just for the money, because they have a need to create. And this need, we all know, nothing new for artists in virtually every medium. Novelists write books before they have a publisher or even a whisper from a publisher. Painters stretch canvases and fill them with paint long before they have gallery representation or a single commission. Designers create for the sake of creativity. They share, they learn, they get better every day. 
Musicians and bands spend hours in makeshift basement studios recording their songs long before a record label deal is, is in sight or even the realistic hope of one exists. They create and create and create, they can't help it. And once they create, they want to share it with the world in any way they can, and so they do. And ironically, the incumbents say this too is a problem. They say that all this creating floods the market and will commoditize the industry. But we're not talking pork bellies, we're not talking wheat, we're talking ideas, we're talking creativity. And creativity is something for which there can never be too large a supply. The more ideas, the better, the best ideas went out. In the world of the internet, the strongest businesses will win, the strongest software will rule, the strongest ideas prevail. It's about creating a Darwinian meritocracy of ideas. The underdogs can compete on those ideas and on their work. It's nothing more than whether my idea is as good as yours, my painting is vibrant, my photo is interesting, or my poem is evocative. So when you open the process to everyone, when you allow the amateur to compete with a professional on a level playing field, you don't get commoditized ideas, you get the best ideas. And we've seen this through centuries, most often in the form of a design competition. So the Howells and Hood design for the Tribune Tower started with a call for submissions. Jorn Utzon's design won the competition for the Sydney Opera House, even though the crude drawings he submitted didn't meet the basic requirements of the competition. And we all know the story of Mai Lin, a 21-year-old undergraduate who won the competition to design the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Lin believes that if the competition had not been blind, if judges were to review submissions based on name rather than a blind number, she never would have won. These examples illustrate the meritocracy of ideas, where the relative unimportance of the amateur and professional label and the true level playing field produced a lasting memorial and a powerful statement. Now, the incumbents will tell you that these upstarts will have their work stolen. And this is a true risk on the internet. The most innovative new communities understand this risk and understand that to ensure that a level playing field remains level, they must protect intellectual property. So for example, iTunes encodes all music on the site and limits free samples to 30 seconds. iStock Photo provides watermarking and multiple licensing schemes. Crowdspring provides custom crowd, uh, contracts and a robust violations reporting process. So, there's an underground, underdog community of creatives on the internet. They're writers and inventors, photographers and designers, musicians and marketers. They're a generation that creates, that shares, collaborates, mashes up and connects more than any other, and we celebrate them every day. Thank you so much for having us. We're Mike and Ross from CrowdSpring.